Welcome back, everybody. Joining me now is an Emmy award-winning comedian who hosts the CNN series United Shades of America. Please welcome back to a late show, W. Kamau Bell. Hey, man, thanks for being here. Good. Oh, yes. hold, hold for the applause. <laughs> hold, hold for the applause, please. Exactly. As performers, it's always up here. We're always hearing the applause. Yes. Um, uh, nice to see you. You're in California, yes. correct? Yes. How, how is everything out there? How are you riding I mean, out the we coronavirus? Doing good, all right. But now it feels like we're like Florida Junior, I would say. That's surprising because California got a lot of praise for how they brought the hammer down firmly, fully. Uh, they were a model for everybody else. What happened? I, Orange County is what happened. All of okay. California is not San Francisco and uh, L.A. I think we have a lot of uh, Orange County spread throughout the state. And I think our governor felt pressure from them and also weird pressure from other governors who were opening up. So it's a, uh, I like to think of this as like, maybe this is like the year or two before the apocalypse. Like whenever you see a movie about the apocalypse, you never see the year or two leading up to it. But I feel like that's what this feels like. Well, things are almost normal, you know. Yeah, but, but like, There's you know, think about, you never see Mad Max like a year before the movie going like, man, gas is expensive. <laughs> You never see Denzel Washington, the Book of Eli prequel. I can't find Bibles anywhere. And, you know, so I feel like we're maybe in a pre-apocalyptic moment, which makes me feel better for some reason. I, 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 okay. I'm just going to knock wood for no particular reason. Now, I know you're, you're a father of three kids. And uh, do you mind if I ask how old they are? Nine, five and a half, and two. So okay, yay. nice. Okay, exactly. So those are the two is a little young, but the uh, the five and a half and the nine certainly school age kids. As I know all around the United States, but especially in California, some school districts are having kids come back, some aren't. As a parent, how how do you feel about that? I mean, everybody wants kids to be able to go get educated, but yeah. there's anxiety. I mean, I, I don't believe our kids are going back to school. I think it's just a domino effect. It's just one, one school district at a time until they all go. I just, I'm sort of preparing for the fact that, like, me and my wife are really going to have to really uh, bone up on how to educate our kids. At the same time, I know that the teachers at our school will be plugged in and trying to help them. It's just what we should have done in this interim is we can see how school works because it's not going to work the way it has worked for a long time, you know. Now... You're a comedian, but you've got a CNN show. Do your kids watch the news? I mean, do my they keep... kids watch a lot of news. My kids definitely, I would put my nine-year-old up against any other nine-year-old about Donald Trump knowledge and what's going on currently in the White House. <laughs> she, would be, she would win that contest. Does she ever set you back on your heels with some of her questions? I mean, I'm, she's like me. Like when I was a kid, I just sort of listened to what adults were saying and then later would ask questions of my mom. And so... I call my daughter an old school ear hustler. Like she'll just come in an hour later and be like, I have a few things I need to discuss. And so- Isn't that great? We had a whole conversation about uh, George Floyd and police brutality that just, while we were on a tire swing, I was just spinning around on the tire swing and she wanted a full explanation of what happened with George Floyd and police brutality in America. And I was just like, ah. Wow. Well, what, yeah. is that, how, what does that feel like to, to have that conversation? I mean, weirdly, it feels great because I would rather have that conversation with her or have my wife have it with her than to her to go through the world and not have had that conversation and then have somebody else spring it on her. Yeah. Well, you've been having this conversation uh, publicly on CNN with your show, United Shades of America, now going into its fifth season uh, for years now. Uh, it's celebrated, Emmy winning. Um, how were you so prescient to know that the United States would eventually have racial problems? <laughs> what was the hint? These, I have these books in my house that have the, that have the word history on them. Okay, and I okay. sort of read them. <laughs> All right. I, I, Send me I do some this links. thing where I, I buy the books and then I try to read the books. And then mm -hmm. often I'm like, hey, that's what's happening right now. So apparently, according to these history books I've read, uh, the United States was founded on white supremacy and racism. Okay. And, and the fuel of America is racism, and that's what keeps white supremacy going. And until we actually redesign the whole system, this is where we're at. Well, let's, let, that takes me to your first episode. The, uh, the, uh, on Sunday, this Sunday, it starts. The first episode's title is, Where Do We Even Start With White Supremacy? 
W. Kamau Bell, where do we even start with white supremacy? First of all, I like that title because it sounds like like a B-side from Hamilton or something. <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure, sure, yeah. Uh, well, we start with accepting the fact that, as I just said, America is built on white supremacy, that the whole history of this country started on genocide and slavery, and from that, everything that's built has been built on top of that and been built in ways to make sure that the people who created the genocide and the slavery, that them and all their descendants could benefit from it. So mm -hmm. it's that's it's really, in the first few minutes of the show, we say, look, don't get confused between white supremacist and white supremacy. You know, a white supremacist is the Klan or a neo-Nazi, but white supremacy is the fact that 44 out of 45 pres presidents have been white men. That's the system of white supremacy. We had uh, uh, Ibram X. Kendi on the show uh, oh, a couple weeks then. ago. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> You guys have a beef? No, no, no. He's just, he's smarter than me. He, <laughs> he is very all. smart. And he was talking about how sort of the roots of white supremacy or the idea of even whiteness or racism as we think of it uh, in a modern sense started about 500 years ago. And it was all motivated economically. It was self-interest in order to set up the Europeans who were taking over this land and uh, capturing and enslaving the people in Africa. You had to have a rationale racism was created as we know it for that economic self-interest. Yeah, before that, I think it was like nationalism and tribalism, like nobody saw anybody as a race of people. And then when they decided the only way they could sort of justify, because they were, many of them were Christians, that this was the right thing to do was to dehumanize people and say they were savages like the Native Americans or they were mm -hmm. animals like black folks. So I think they had to come up with a way to go, not only is this what we're doing, but it's actually the right thing to do. Where, you know, any number of modern day white politicians have said that, well, slavery wasn't that bad. Black people actually had three meals a day and enjoyed it. That, that's still a justification that happens. Um, I know that your mom is in this season. Um, why was it important for you to get your mom in there? I mean, my mom is an 83 year old black woman, which makes her an expert on racism, first of all. Let's just mm -hmm. be clear about that. But also, I put my dad in an episode in, uh, in season three, and my mom has been clear that since he was in, that she needs to be in the show and she's been very and they're not together so it really creates problems for me so i was like i think you'll fit into the white supremacy episode more than you'll fit into the east la episode so that's that's how we got her in. i i know your mom was very influential about how how you sort of see uh the history of the united states and and the, the way that black history has been ignored what what how would you explain her to somebody who hasn't met her before like me i mean i i i, <laughs> I have a joke i used to do in my act that i said uh, my mom is such a hardcore black woman that I was 11 years old before I realized that a cracker was also a delicious snack. That's a <laughs> So my mom growing up was always talking about racism, white supremacy, the man. Back in the 70s, it was the man, mm -hmm. talking about yes. the man. And yeah. she didn't shy away from talking to me about those things, even to the point that, like, you know, the talk that people say, that, that black parents give kids, I remember that talk. I remember when my mom took me to the store and said, this is what's gonna happen when you're in a store by yourself as a little black boy. So my mom really made sure, she wouldn't let me leave the house without knowing that I was black and what that meant in the world. You have, and I'm gonna get this right, you have a, you've been very deliberate about how you define racism. Why, why is it important for you to be so specific about your definition? And, and what is it, if you don't mind sharing? Well, for me, it's not even that it's my definition. This is the definition that makes the most sense. I think for most of this country, the dictionary has defined racism as just when one race hates another race. But that doesn't make sense for a definition of racism because this country, if a black person hates a white person, that's just hate for the most part. But the system in place of white supremacy means that when white people hate black people, they actually, the system encourages that hatred and puts white, it puts black people on the bottom. So I think it's important to think of like, prejudice is just like, I don't like that white guy, Stephen Colbert. That's just me hating you. But what, what true racism needs power behind it. And I think that's the thing we're trying to do with the show is really let people understand that like, this isn't just about feelings. You can prove all this stuff. Racism and white supremacy is statistical. You can look at it, it's scientific. Now, race isn't scientific. We made it up, as you said. But all the uh, but all the things that go into racism, white supremacy, you can see. Well, season five of United Shades of America premieres this Sunday on CNN. W. Kamau Bell, everybody. Thanks for being here. We'll be right back with the chicks.